we start? So, who knows the Overs Truth Shop already? So who's here for an update, basically? Okay, so the others, never heard of it, never seen it. That's great, then I might not bore you to death. That's, it's, that's very good. So, hi, I'm Björn. I'm the guy who uh, leads this lovely uh, OWASP project. Welcome, take a seat. Um, yeah, the OWASP Juice Shop. Um, the tagline is, it's probably the most modern and sophisticated insecure web application. And here are some, some uh, I wouldn't call it customer testimonials exactly, but it's kind of some funny quotes by people. I didn't make those up, those are actually real, so you can find the links here. So I have all proof for everything, for all sources. So what is a juice shop? Um, I think we can skip this slide because we were, we know that now because we're at the OWASP conference. So why does the project, uh, it's a project called juice shop. So in German there's a word um, which is Saftladen. That is a term we use for shops which uh, give you a really bad shopping experience, right? So crappy products, really unfriendly staff, you, if you want to return something, they will not never take it back, that kind of thing. So that's a Saftladen in German. If you split it into Saft and Laden, it's juice and shop, right? So that made, made total sense for this project. Um, I was, at some point I realized, oh, this uh, matches JS from JavaScript somehow, but that was not the original plan, actually. So I, that means uh, also the, the logo came after that, right? So it, it wasn't, I didn't build this around the logo, the logo was a later idea. So, instead of trying to explain what it does in slides, let's just dive in for a moment and do some shopping. So this is the juice shop. It has all kinds of interesting products, you can Take a look, right? Read the description here. Green smoothie, really healthy. It also has some uh, juice shop merchandise, like this one. These are my favorite uh, temporary tattoos. So I don't have any with me for the conference because they were out like almost a year ago. I have to reorder them, but yeah. So th these really exist. So that's not that's not uh, made up. And you just won one of these lovely things. Hmm? Only four yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We, we can we can purchase one of these in the shop now. So let's um, let's actually do some shopping. So there's other stuff going on here. And if if you know the juice shop from previous times, um, you should realize that, or you should immediately see that the UI is a little bit different now, right? So the products are much more uh, in this kind of uh, tile mode here. So it looks a little bit uh, nicer, and it has this lovely sidebar menu now. So let's do some shopping. So, first of all, I need to register as a customer, I guess. So, let's do that. Can you read that in the back? It's okay? So, Jan at... Okay, so password, 5 to 20 characters long. Perfect. Right? No, 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 it was not one to three. How, how? So, security question, uh, everybody's favorite, right? So, which one should we pick? Which is the most secure ones from your point of view? Eldest sibling's middle name, mother's maiden name, mother's or father's birthday, name of your favorite pet, maybe? Name of your dentist when you were a teenager. <laughs> Do not include the doctor. And I actually, I did not make that up. I, I stole it from some, some other place, and they actually had it in there like that. Right? Oh. So, okay, let's let's do that. So, let's register and okay, complete successfully. Now let's log in. Right, and um, let's add some stuff to our shopping basket. So, like this. And I also wanted some tattoos and a Velcro patch, or maybe two or three. Let's see. Let's go to the shopping basket here. And well, as you can see, there's now. 
right? And it realized that there's only five of the patches left. So perfect, perfect uh, uh, business validation here going on. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. So let's check out. So now, now it, it, uh, this is something that's completely new. So now you actually have to submit uh, an address. So I will, I will just type in some, some gibberish here so we get, get this going quickly. Oh, no. <coughs> the mobile number is actually validated. Uh, don't know, I don't know if that makes sense, but well, never mind. So let's do that. City, state, submit. OK, great. So delivery speed, also brand new. One day delivery, standard delivery. Where could we have taken that idea from? I don't know. So let's take standard. Uh, now we have to pay, actually. That's also new. In the past, you didn't have to pay for the juice shop products. So now you actually have to add a credit card with a valid credit card number, right? So it has to be 16 digits. The only thing, we wanted to make sure that nobody actually actually ever enters a valid credit card into the juice shop for hopefully obvious reasons. So that's why we made the expiry years from 2080 to 2099. So should, that should be fine for a while. Okay, so we pay by credit card. Um, we could take a look if we maybe find a coupon code to save some money, right? You can save some money here. So let's, let's try random letters. Invalid. Okay, too bad. So, may, but maybe we are lucky, and there's something on Twitter. So let's see. Coupon. No, not in those. Let's see. Maybe in the older tweets. Ah, yeah. this looks good, right? So. Make that a little bit so you can see it better. Here we go, right? So there's a coupon code. Now, what would you expect to happen when I paste that in now? Already Redeem used. It. Hmm? Already used. Already used. <laughs> no. Something checked. Oh, well, something something went wrong there. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I can find some coupon code elsewhere. Um, uh, oh, oh, take a look. Someone someone actually complained that they couldn't use the coupon code here. Malform QRI error when they tried to use the coupon code. <laughs> well, that's weird. Um, but luckily, um, our sales team uh, supposed to, uh, told they would look into this, but there seems to be a coupon code on Reddit. So that works. Let's try that one. So. Does it look kind of similar to the other? Kind of does. Kind of does, right? Well, that's probably a coincidence. Thirty percent will be applied later. So let's see if that works out. Let's continue. Da 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 da. Uh, place order and pay. And now we can, if we want to, we can take a look at the order confirmation here. And that says, hey, 30% discount. Right, awesome. So it's actually, it behaves like a real web shop, right? So we can now even track our the, the delivery progress and everything. And because we took st we chose standard delivery, it takes five days to actually get to us. Spoiler alert, you will not get any juice no matter where and what, and what you order from the juice shop, okay? There, there will be no delivery, but that's why you don't have to put in a real credit card number as well. Okay, that's how the juice shop essentially works, right? So it's actually a real web shop. And except for this little misbehavior that it had uh, with the uh, coupon code, with the first one we tried, everything worked fine, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of. So if you want to run the juice shop just to buy random stuff that will never be shipped to you, um, you can install it in different ways. You can just do it locally with uh, Node.js installation, or you can use our Docker image. You can also use a Vagrant file to set it up. Or you can do cloud deployments wherever you want. Um, especially easy is the Heroku cloud deployment where you just need to click one button in our readme file and uh, it will basically spin up an instance for you, give you a dedicated URL. And you are even allowed to hack um, that cloud instance because I have a 
written confirmation by Heroku that that's fine for them. I don't have have that from a, from Amazon, so up to you if you try it. It works. You can install it, but I'm not not sure if you're allowed to have it actually. So now the the main reason why the juice shop exists is of course not the or some uh, shopping experience, but the hacking challenges. So in total there are 88 challenges at the moment which you can solve from all kinds of uh, categories, including OWASP Top 10 and other security flaws. So it's not just an OWASP Top 10 uh, application, it has some, some very crazy other vulnerabilities as well. So, um, the challenges are rated in six different uh, difficulty levels. So you can start with the easy ones and then work your way up, up to the completely crazy ones, which might take you, I don't know, like, like a day for one of the challenges to actually understand how it works. So there's a lot of time you can sink into the juice shop if you want to do it without looking at any uh, solutions or hints. The juice shop features a scoreboard, which um, basically keeps track of your progress. So it will recognize when you solve the challenge successfully and will uh, remember it. So it will indicate this by this little soft icon. It's a touch screen. <laughs> ah, yeah, okay. Good. Um, you can filter it by uh, categories and by difficulties, and so it's quite, quite convenient. You're also immediately notified when you solve a challenge um, with these little green pop-up boxes. So it's kind of the, basically I took the idea from 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 gaming where you when you do some kind of uh, special in-game achievement, you always get a nice pop-up showing you, hey, you did something awesome, right? So this is like in another kind of gamification approach. Um, pro tip. If you shift click one of the <coughs> X's, all notifications will flow, which can be quite useful sometimes. If um, you, for some reason, crash your juice shop instance, uh, or you just turn it off uh, because you have other things to do at the weekend uh, in between, and you then restart it later, and you did not clear your cookies, um, the juice shop will basically restore all hacking progress for you, right? So it stores the progress in a cookie, and this will be reapplied automatically once you start the application the next time, which is also quite convenient. And this one, this is brand new. It's still kind of work in progress. Um, that's our lovely hacking instructor who is supposed to help people a little bit with the, with the um, easier challenges to actually get started. I will just quickly show it how it works. Um, here. So when I visit the juice shop, ah wait, I just have to restart the server so it actually shows me the notifications when I saw the challenge. I turned that off. So as you can see, server restart is quite fast. I can just refresh it and then let's go to the scoreboard. And some of the challenges, <coughs> 88 challenges, right? Takes a, takes a moment to render. Some of the challenges now have, ah, sorry, wrong instance. Some of the challenges have, ah, here you go, that's the notification. Some of the challenges have this little hat icon here, and then you can, uh, when you click that, you can start an interactive hacking session with this little um, friendly juicy bot, where I also had a lot of stickers downstairs. So let's let's try this one. Um, log in with the administrator's account. So, so it will now tell you some more or less interesting information and ask you to do something, right? So when I go to the login page now, it will give me some, some nice input, zoom in a bit, so. blah blah blah, explains to me what SQL injection actually is and we could actually try this single quote attack for example. So, 
And now it will, it will wait in this st state until I actually type in what it expects, right? So when I type a single quote, the jar now jumps to the next step, to the next step basically. So any type anything into the password field, press the login button, and now it says, hey, did you notice this little error here, right? So, but that's not really helpful. Well, thank you, Juicy Bot. That's right. But maybe if we look into the network tab of the JavaScript console, we can learn a little bit more. So let's do that. So let's redo this step. And if we look into the response, right, there's the SQLite error, right? So that's pretty obviously a SQL injection problem. And now JuicyBot gives us some more tips, like for example, hey, try out this, uh, single quote or true. And again, now it actually I had something still in the password field, so it skipped that step and jumped directly to the next one, right? So we try to make this as intuitive and beginner friendly as possible. Log in. Hmm, still doesn't work. Okay, what does the console say? Okay, so any ideas what we did wrong? True ends with a same quote, so. Yeah, we basically have to comment out the rest of the query, right? Mm. So we do this double dash to actually get rid of the remaining end of the query, try again, and then hooray, that worked. So we get this notification, first of all, and just to see that it actually did what we expected, we are logged in as admin, and JuicyBot says, hey, congratulations, right? So that's that's basically the, the whole thing. That's It's work in progress. We only have it implemented for three challenges yet, but uh, there's more to come. Um, one of the main issues with JuicyBot is that the, the hacking instructions are currently part of the main JavaScript. So when, when you basically analyze the JavaScript for vulnerabilities, you will also always see these hacking set tips. So it's kind of a, an accidental cheating Thingy. So we, we try to separate that in, a, in an upcoming release. This is basically just for just for fun at the moment. Okay, so that was JuicyBot. Um, you can also do CTFs with the Juice Shop quite nicely. So by, by starting it with a different command line parameter, you can um, add these little flag codes to the uh, challenge source notification, and you can copy those and paste them into whatever capture the flag server you use. So the idea is that you, you have uh, instances, doesn't matter if they're locally deployed or uh, on, on some, some cloud server or wherever, and they share one uh, secret, which makes um, basically these, these flag codes, and then you can use either CTFD or Facebook CTF <coughs> server to actually track the overall progress in the CTF. So to facilitate that a little bit more, we um, have this little utility project called CTF, CTF Extension, which you can install locally on your computer, or you can run it in the Docker image as well. And it basically gives you a little wizard to set up uh, capture the flag events. So let me just show that. So this is how it works. So you run the command line tool, and it will ask you a few questions, like which framework do you want to use, um, where do you want to retrieve the challenges from, from some running instance, what key do you want to use, and then you can pick if you want to have uh, hints and uh, even more dedicated hint uh, links for free or for paid, uh, but, um, if you have to pay for them by points, right? And now it's doing the same again for, for another server, for Facebook CDF, for example. And what you get, um, you get uh, either a zip file or a JSON file, and um, those are in the format of the CTF server um, th that it uses for backups, right? So you can basically just start a blank vanilla uh, installed uh, CTF server and just use the backup import um, feature and paste in the juice shop exported file, and then you have all the challenges with the right matching flag codes set up and the hints and everything, right? So that's takes like five minutes. The 
the only thing I don't recommend is to use the juice shop for any commercial CTFs, right? So if it's about price money, don't do that. Because there's so many solutions and blog posts and all kinds of stuff about juice shop challenges that it's way too easy to cheat. It's more for fun. <coughs> you can also do this without this little question interactive mode. You can just paste in a configuration file which specifies how your CDF should look like. And then your CTF server, in this case CTFD, might look like this, right? So quite, quite straightforward. Very recently, um, one of my, my core team members uh, actually created a separate project under the GitHub account of his company um, that allows you to host the juice shop for multiple users. That's one thing that people often get wrong. So the juice shop is meant to be used by one user. Okay, so you have one installation running that is for one user. Because only then the user has his own or her own uh, hacking scoreboard and, uh, right, so otherwise if multiple users use it, you get uh, confused because challenges are suddenly solved just because you are, you know, some other users did them, right? And then it's not, it's not really fun. It, you have no idea what you actually did and did not do. So this solves uh, that problem quite nicely by setting up a Kubernetes cluster with uh, a number of nodes and you get automatically, um, you can visit the same URL and all training or CTF participants get the same instance always, right? It's basically pinned to their, um, to their browser. They even, they even wrote um, a custom load balancer that is uh, able to, to make sure that, or that makes sure that, that you cannot easily um, find out the address of some other team's uh, juice shop instances. So there's no, it's not that easy to actually uh, cheat them in, in, in CTF sessions. The juice shop can also run in so-called quiet mode. So it doesn't show any notifications then and it removes GitHub links and some other um, information. So that's quite useful if you do awareness trainings, right? So the first time when I did this hacking, um, uh, the, the shopping demo, I just use it in quiet mode. So even if I accidentally trigger a challenge, uh, it wouldn't tell me so. so. That's quite good for, if you don't, if you have managers listening then they are confused by the screen alert boxes, right? That doesn't make much sense to them. Even better for managers who have not so much imagination and don't find this job, uh, this juice theme funny, you can make the juice shop look like uh, an application of your own company, right? So you can completely customize it. For example, I brought the theme that I'm using um, for awareness trainings in, in the company I work for, which is a big logistics company. But we also have some merchandise. So the juice shop in customized version for us looks like this. Yeah, completely different color scheme, different logo, different application name, different products, down to da -da -da -da, completely different Twitter links, Facebook page, everything. You can basically customize almost everything that points directly to the juice shop uh, in a way that it looks like something from your company, right? So that's really useful for awareness sessions, especially with non-technical people who just don't like this dark themed juice stuff with uh, strange products and temporary tattoos don't really work for them, right? So you can you can use this quite quite easily. And setting this up is not actually hard because all you have to do is provide your own configuration file, which is in simple YAML format, and you just have to uh, specify the things you want to change, right? So you can keep as much as you want but you can uh, specify everything up to the name of the cryptocurrency that the juice shop is using internally as a 
Yeah, it also has some fake blockchain stuff going on. So you can do everything you, you want here. Um, yeah. So the, and also the nice thing is, for, for example, for images and other files, you can also specify a URL. And then when the juice shop starts, it will just automatically download all those files and put them into the right place and then uh, display them as product. Right? So it's pretty convenient. Can, to override your products, do the, basically the same thing, right? It's also YAML format. You provide names, descriptions, price, images. Some Im some products are required to exist for, um, or they they are required to be mapped to certain challenges. <laughs> for example, that's a product tempering and a Christmas challenge, and they both need a specific product to be associated with them. But if you forget that, um, during startup, the juice shop will tell you that your configuration is not valid. Okay, so it's pretty, pretty fail safe to use. Okay, this one's not actually brand new, but we uh, repackaged it a little bit. So I want to show this because it's really nice. So we have a, a, a side project that uh, can be used for cross-site scripting demos. And not the boring alert box stuff, but something actually fun. So you can assume that we got this kind of email, right? And who would not click on that link? I mean, come on, it's completely legit. Right? I actually got one of these uh, just recently, so. <laughs> how much, I mean, how stupid can a spam us? Okay. So, click her now. Never mind. And the most important thing is it needs to be signed by someone really important. <laughs> so that's why I'm CIO, uh, CEO and everything. I'm CISP, uh, CISXP, whatever that is, certified. Uh, Chief uh, Facility Manager and Senior Vice President of Marketing. So that must be a legitimate email from a very important person. So let's click on this email and see what happens. Okay, that was awkward, um, but I mean, never mind, right? So let, let's see if the application still works. I mean, what's the worst thing that could have happened as well? So let's search for uh, OWASP. Hello? Ah, okay, it did. Okay, that works. Well, then, I mean, I mean, I can... I can just log in again, right? I mean, uh, okay, this is a different instance, so I don't have this account I just created, so I use another one. So, uh, admin at juice. Mm -hmm. Okay, right? So everything's still working. Perfectly fine. So now, now the thing is, um, this little uh, cross-site scripting attack not only added this fancy music, but it also um, added a little keylogger that just submitted all things I typed to another um, to another server, right? In this case, because it's all running locally, the server is just on a different port, and it looks like this. It's not pretty, but it does what it's supposed to do. So here we can see, okay, it submitted OWASP. Let's see. Uh, admin, here we go, right? Admin, add juice shop, and the password. Okay, so that was all submitted. And as you can see here, after I've been logged in, it also started submitting my cookies. That's very convenient, right? So, and it actually does this um, and refreshes this automatically every five seconds, right? So, every five seconds you get all the data the user typed in. This is quite easy to fix for the client if they know about that because all they have to do is refresh 
and now the keylogger is gone, right? Because there's nothing that has been installed locally. This is all <coughs> happening in JavaScript, right? So now everything is clean again, but the user won't know that, unfortunately. Okay, so, so much for cross-site scripting. Short look behind the scenes. So the Juice Shop is an Angular application. Um, latest Angular version uses material design. Uh, in the previous um, UI, it used uh, Twitter Bootstrap. So we switched to that uh, material style because it was more, uh, it just looked looked a little bit, even a little bit nicer. Um, in the back end, we have a Node.js uh, application running the Express framework, pretty famous um, for sim serving simple uh, APIs and other things in the back end. We are using SQLize to connect to a database. So it's like an OR mapper similar to a Hibernate just in JavaScript. Database is SQL, uh, SQLite, uh, which is just, um, we use it, so we basically just have a file with the data in it, right? Which makes it very lightweight to run. So it's just in one Docker image, right? So you don't need Docker Compose or anything for running the juice shop because everything is just in one image including the relational database and the NoSQL database, which is MarsDB, which is a JavaScript implementation of a MongoDB, which, of course, nothing can go wrong if you do that, right? So, <laughs> so we have like two or three NoSQL injection vulnerabilities as well. Okay. Juice Shop has multi-language support, so you can easily switch it right to almost everything including Dutch is also there right so I think the translation rate of Dutch is now down a little bit so there's there's been some new terms so if someone wants to wants to help with that we have a crowd in a project where you can just conveniently translate original strings it's uh, the same um, provider that Zep is using very successfully, right? And it's working quite well for us as well. Um, so in the in previous versions, up to the current release, um, you could only translate things which are coming from the client, right? So you see it still says apple juice and apple pomace here. So when I switch to German, right, that doesn't change, okay? But in the... Uh, in the next version, which is running here, that's the upcoming version. If you switch to German and you force reload the page, ah, damn, that, uh, just need to restart it, sorry, without the custom theme. Luckily, that only takes a few seconds. So now it's Apfelsaft. Okay, so now that's translated as well. And we even allow translations for the challenges. Okay, so the challenge texts are now also in German. Which is, I mean, it was not rated the most needed and ultimately useful feature. But there are some uh, countries or areas in the world where English is just not the default, right? You can just cannot expect someone to speak English. So it might make sense to actually allow doing these translations uh, as well. So the effort for doing this is a little bit higher than just for the front-end languages, uh, for the front-end texts. That's why at the moment there's only English and German. And German is not even completed yet, right? So all the other languages if you know any of them, if you have a lot of time, then feel free to translate, also on Crowdlink. Okay, some technical stuff even more behind the scenes. So the Juice Shop says it's the most sophisticated vulnerable application. That's because there's actually some proper software development going on. Uh, so with unit tests like crazy, API tests even more crazy, and the my favorite part, 
we have a complete test suite, end-to-end -end test suite, uh, which is actually exploiting all the hacking challenges automatically, right? So basically, I can do, um, if, if all these pass, I can do a release more or less blindly because I know that no challenge has been broken so by a software change. You're testing if your right? product is still exploitable. Yeah, and testing is my, if my product is as exploitable as I wanted to have, right? It's kind of the reverse of uh, security test automation. But it works quite well for us. So I rarely have this kind of uh, pain when I'm doing the last manual test. So we are using lots of tools from the DevOps world, so complete uh, CI CD pipeline based on Travis CI <coughs> with some nice services on top, like Code Climate, for example, to do the code coverage checks and software quality checks. Uh, and I've, I also use SNUC for security checks, which seems like counterintuitive uh, because we don't want to fix those issues. But um, if this service or any other uh, actually finds a new vulnerability, I might either want to fix it or build a challenge around it, right? So, uh, sorry. Oh, no, this was right. Okay. So, some questions that we always get. So, some things we can just quickly jump through. So, when you're working with the juice shop, uh, you can use all the pen testing tools you want. Right? So, you can, you can just do it in the browser if you like. You can do it with Zap, with Burp, with whatever. You can you throw your full commercial suite of automated scanners against it and then get a report with zero findings, probably. Okay? Because... Many of the challenges in the juice shop are so are happening so uh, so much in the client that most of the traditional scanning tools just don't don't know what to do with it, right? So they might find some stuff happening in the API that's go what's going wrong there, but all the client bugs like DOM-based cross-site scripting, I don't know any scanner who automatically finds that. Okay, so use your tools. I also um, I did this as, uh, in the in the Belfast uh, AppSec conference, and I also did it already uh, here a little bit. So walking through the, uh, to the vendors and handing out my info postcards and saying, "Hey, use it as a guinea pig, right? Just see how good or not good your scanner works with this kind of application." So yes, I know you can scan PHP applications perfectly, but try it on this one because that's what's happening today. What you should not do, you should not look at the source code of the juice shop itself, right? So if you look into the GitHub repository, into the actual code of the application, you of course see all the checks that we are making for verifying challenges and that kind of stuff. So that's basically just cheating. Of course you can look at all the code that the juice shop gives you into your browser, right? So all the JavaScripts, which should be roughly 17,000 lines of uh, JavaScript, right? That you just have in your DOM. Um, you can go through that as much as you want, right? So that's free, uh, free for you, but not in the GitHub repository. You can search on the internet. You will probably find lots of uh, existing solutions as well, so it's up to you to decide how much cheating you want to do. If installation fails, please read the manual and try again. Please do not open GitHub issues for installation problems, okay? We have a, we have a community chat uh, on GitHub, right over here, right? Where we answer all installation questions anyone might ever have, so no problem. But please, no, no GitHub issues, because we try to use GitHub issues for actual work items and actual bugs, right? Not for support. If you crash your server, you just restart it, everything will reset, so all users you created and addresses you created will be gone, but it will work again, okay? So it's pretty much impossible to break it permanently. And as I mentioned, the challenges will be restored if you don't um, use it in, in uh, anonymous mode with your browser, right? So if you store your cookies, then everything is fine. If you are stuck completely um, the scoreboard has some links uh, which will send you to an online hosted version of uh, the companion guide that I wrote, which is at the moment I think at 260 pages. Um, so that has hints for every challenge, 
It has step-by-step -step solutions for every challenge, so if you're really stuck and you just want to see how it works, you can just follow the step-by-step -step guides. And it has all the information about setting it up, about uh, doing CTF setup, doing customization and everything, right? So if any documentation seems to be missing, please look into that thing because it's probably in there. And if not, then please open a ticket uh, or just ping me in any other way and uh, I will add that. Okay, that's supposed to be the single point of uh, truth for all juice shop questions. And it's free uh, on, on LeanPub and online on Gitbook. So. If you find another vulnerability that's not tracked, please let me know because I like to create new hacking challenges, okay? So, or maybe if it's not possible to wrap around a challenge uh, around some problem, then um, I can try to fix the issue at least. If you run the juice shop on Docker, you might realize that some challenges are not available. I can show that because this server is running in Docker. So, for example, this one, right? Remote code execution DOS attack is not available. And some others as well, right? Like uh, server side template injection and such stuff. So, in the end, challenges which are actually dangerous to the to not only the application but possibly also to its environment to its infrastructure uh, are disabled by by default when you run it in docker or on heroku okay because i don't i mean i have this written approval from heroku that uh, people can hack the application but they also wrote please don't do denial of service attacks against our infrastructure so i turned off the challenges that could actually do that or that might be able to do that i don't know because i'm not a pen tester Okay, so you can disable that, of course, with some safety override flag in the config when you have everything, but then it's completely up to you if something breaks. It's anyway because it's MIT licensed, right? So I don't take responsibility for anything you break. <laughs> a fun story. I once re received a request from, a, from someone from a, I think, insurance company who wanted to host the juice shop uh, for a training internally. And they sent me some, some vendor questionnaire, like, I don't know, 30 pages of questions uh, to answer and with something to sign, actually, that I take responsibility for stuff. And I was like, uh, no, <laughs> I will not even read that because MIT licensed, you use it. And my recommendation in that case was uh, just let the participants of your training deploy it on Heroku, that it's not in your data center and you should be fine. So. Okay, contributions are very welcome, either via pull request on GitHub, obviously, but also via Crowdin if you want to have the translations. A habit of mine is to send first-time contributors a little uh, letter with some stickers, postcards, and other stuff, so things that you obviously now all have from the conference table, so, mm -hmm. but... Uh, <laughs> As you see, if you if you do some something crazy like going to the first row, you can even win some special swag, right? So I um, I always try to have some some special stuff with me, and uh, some of my my let's say core contributors who did a little bit more of work, they also got equipped with t-shirts or polo shirts or sweaters or whatever, right? So almost all money that is donated to the juice shop, to the project, is going into merchandise and uh, like the roll-up banner that's uh, on the floor below, right? So stuff like this. And that seems to work out quite well. Okay, so total number of contributors to the last major release was uh, 56, so that's the overall number of contributors who ever committed something to the juice shop. Uh, it's a flagship. It's even has a silver medal from the um, core infrastructure initiative group. So they are basically um, giving like these uh, badges out to projects who do something useful for the continued existence of the internet or something like that. Mm. Right? And the juice shop seems to count to 
I don't know why, but it, it seems to do what they expect. Uh, it's pretty well tested, and it's downloaded quite often. So 21,000 downloads from GitHub, 6,000 downloads in total over its lifetime on SourceForge. Well, I was told some people cannot access GitHub from their company networks, so SourceForge seems to work. I don't know why, why they make a difference there, but then at least you only get legacy bugs, right? And, so, <laughs> and it has f almost four million pulls of the Docker image. That's not all actual users. There was, uh, I told you about the guy who wrote this juicy CTF, multiplayer setup thing. Mm -hmm. They had a bug in that, and that pulled images quite aggressively. And so that's why it jumped at some point from like, I think 250,000 to 2 million over a short period. So, but it looks nice on, <laughs> on a slide like this. Uh, that's the number of downloads of the ebook from EPUB. Not, not paid, but free download. You can pay for it if you want to, but uh, and I think roughly 10% of people actually do. But uh, yeah, so 6,000 downloads is not too bad. So things uh, up coming up next. Um, this whole checkout process with address selection and payment mode and all that kind of stuff has no built-in challenges yet. It might be broken, but then that's not intentional yet. Uh, so that's one of the next goals to actually get more challenges in those. The hacking instructor instructor still needs some, some love, as I already told you. And that's the, probably the most important thing for you now. Um, we need to apply some pressure to a friend of mine to uh, do a full jingle for the juice shop. So there's this ticket, um, and it would be highly appreciated if you all went to this ticket and upvote it and write some comment like, hey, Brian, hurry up, make this happen. Because if you do, we will be able to enjoy a second, more of this. When you want to shop online, then you had better be sure the experience is safe and also secure. Don't want to let no SQL, I, or cross-site scripting ruin your day. No, you want to break into a joyous song and say, Choose shop, choose shop, you can order tasty beverages in any quantity. Choose shop, choose shop, just don't test the site with Burp Suite or you won't like what you see. So, Brian, who's doing the 7-Minute Security Podcast um, over in Minnesota in the U.S., um, has promised to actually do a proper full jingle version. And this was basically his rushed out preview edition. And I think that's already quite good. So if he would actually put some more time in it, that would be really cool. But yeah. he seems to have other things on his mind as well. And we can fix that by just putting some pressure on him uh, via GitHub. So, okay, timeline for everything as always is when it's done. Uh, I think I need to replace that image at some point because most people don't get the reference anymore. Who, who gets the ref? Who, who gets an idea why this? <laughs> okay, I see. Not, not so many gamers left. This was a game that was promised for like I don't know, 15 years, and then it, the developers always said it's done when it's done. Right? So, okay, here's uh, the links to the to the project page. Um, I'm just in the process of migrating from the old OWASP wiki page to the new website, so the content will be. Uh, there, I hope next week maybe. All the source code is uh, completely free, MIT license. The book is uh, is uh, uh, CC license. Uh, I also have some lecture slides for a university lecture I'm doing online, and some other training material which is also completely free uh, and open source, so you can take a look if you want. And that's basically all I have.